All right. All right, I'm here. I'm live. I'm a little ashy, but shit, I'm here and I'm live. Let me see what's going on in the room here. Glad to have everybody tuning in. I'm a little tired, but I'm here. I've been running around with the kids all day. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, what's going on? And how is the family? My natural oils will have my face looking unashy in a few minutes. What's going on with y'all, man? We're here, ready to chop it up as we normally do on a Sunday night right here live on Tariq Radio. And by the way, everybody, y'all should be subscribing. If you are not subscribing to the show or if you have not subscribed, I suggest, ladies and gentlemen, that you do so. And the subscribe button is right here. See that red button right there that I'm pointing right at? It says subscribe. So everybody, right where I'm pointing, right down there, right below my finger, it says subscribe. Everybody start hitting that button so y'all can know when I'm broadcasting right away. Shout out to you guys, family. Shout out to New York. Shout out to everybody who has contributed to Hidden Colors 5, especially my 300, the M300, the Melanoi 300. Shout out to you. But shout out to everybody. Um, shout out to everybody who's contributed to HC5. Right now, at the moment, we are at 60K. We're at 60,000 right now. We got 14 days left. We're on a nice steady roll. We need to keep that momentum going, family. You know, I need all hands on deck with this one. We definitely need all hands on deck with the call to action to this because we're making the greatest film about black empowerment, which is HC5. And this is going to have a global impact to contribute to the Hidden Colors franchise. This is the only film on the planet that has created a code that everybody understands that they need to be on. This is the closest thing to a global code that we have. People getting on the Hidden Colors franchise and utilizing the codes. This is why the film has been seen as so dangerous to those in the dominant society, and this is why they go out of their way to not acknowledge it, but we do not need them to acknowledge it. We do not need them to do that. This is why it's important for us to be on top of our game and to be on code. What's up, DJ Scrap Dirty? What's up, Kiki Naturalista? Um, but this is why it's very important for us to be on that code. I got to see Childish Gambino's new music video. I heard about it. Um, got to stop this swatting. Who else got swatted? Yeah, you can't wait to Hidden Color. Hidden Colors 5 is going to be a monster. Hidden Colors 5 is going to be a monster. No David Brown. He's not going to be in it. They brought back Roseanne. They're going to call it the Connors. That's what's up. But yeah, we got to keep on that steady road. What we don't want to do, let's not get sidetracked by trolls. Let's not get sidetracked by undercover white supremacists. Let's not get sidetracked by coons. No, it's their job to try to sabotage anything that's progressive and black and 100% controlled by us. You understand? Let's not even get caught up in that bullshit. Because we're doing good. We're doing what we're supposed to do. 
we're doing exactly what we're supposed to do, which is stay on code. See, when it comes down, see, when it comes down to getting rid of the sloganisms, see, a lot of folks don't want to stop the sloganisms. A lot of folks don't want to stop the, the clicheisms. You understand? When it's time to put your money where your mouth is or go out here in the streets or, or handle that business, see, the old saying is money talks. The people who are serious, they put money behind their actions. Ice-T was in an episode on Law & Order about swatting. Okay, shout out to Ice-T, who's going to be in HC5. Yes, yeah, sloganeering is at an all-time high. See, we're going to have to get off that, family. We're going to have to get off that. You, you dig? We saw a lot of sloganisms at that Aretha Franklin funeral. And I, I, I went in depth about that the other day. I went real deep about that Aretha Franklin funeral, which was actually a boule meeting. The Aretha Franklin funeral was a boule convention. Okay, I want y'all to understand that. And I got to kind of spoon feed people information about the boule and all of their connections. And like I said the other day, as far as the Aretha Franklin funeral, because it was so boule infested, it was nothing, it was boule all day in there. A lot of these boule cats, a lot of folks don't even know what that is. And I said, Aretha Franklin must be connected with the Lynx. The Lynx, that's the female version of the boule. The child version of it is Jack and Jill of America. So whenever you see any reference to boule, let me spell it, B-O-U-L-E, the boule. And there's a lot of boule people who listen here. All right? And let me, let me say this for the record. All boule folks aren't bad. I'll, I'll even say that. I'll go that far with it. All boule people are not bad. All cats in the boule are not bad. Unfortunately, the boule has a very bad history of being on some bullshit and allowing bullshit in the boule. Boule is like a black secret society. The average black person, see, that's why so many people are confused in the room. <clears throat> a lot of black people don't even know who they are. But you see them and hear them every day. And, you know, I've been talking about the boule for damn near a decade. I did a pay-per-view special years ago about the boule. The boule has been around since, I want to say, 1904. You had people, it was a dude named Henry Minton who started it. And it's like this black elitist organization of these people who think that they're the talented 10th. Let me break that down for you. And let me let me go back before I go there. But like I was saying about Aretha Franklin's funeral, I said, Aretha Franklin, she must be clicked in with, with the links of somebody. And sure enough, I did some research. And if you go to the links Twitter page, they're like shouting her out. And I, so Aretha Franklin was a member of the links. Give a good book on the boule. I give you two good books. And I got one of well, I got both of them in the house, as a matter of fact. One book that was written actually in the 1950s by E. Franklin Frazier is called Black Bourgeoisie. It's a book called Black Bourgeoisie. Another book called Our Kind of People by Lawrence Graham. I think that's his name. He's actually a member of the Boule. His book is deep. Now, even though this guy is kind of a coon, he breaks down a lot of stuff within the boule. He talks about the colorism, how he was raised on that colorism shit within the boule. Um, another brother, Steve Coakley, he breaks down the boule. Um, Bobby um, Hemet broke down the boule years ago. But he broke down E. Franklin Frazier back in the 50s. They talked about that whole paper bag thing. To get around those black bourgeoisies, you had to, they were on some colorism shit for a long time. If you were dark-skinned, 
they really wasn't fucking with you for a long time. Then, unless you had long paper, your paper had to be real long. As a matter of fact, if some of y'all remember, I had one of the kids um, who was a part of that Jack and Jill, a brother who called up to my live view stream years ago. It was a brother who was down with Jack and Jill, which are, these are the children of the boule. And the brother said that, you know, they were on that colorism shit with him and his family. And they had to pay like some extra money to get him clicked in because he was a real dark skinned dude. You understand? So understand when you see certain words and names, when you see Boule, when you see Sigma Pi Phi, when you see um, the Lynx, or when you see Jack and Jill, most of the time you won't see that. So you got to kind of look and, and, and look at what people's associations are. Um, Graham talked about how Diana Ross couldn't get her daughter in Jack and Jill because she's coming from the projects. Yeah, Jack and Jill was on that type of shit back in the day. Back in the day, it had to be, you had to come from like a couple of generations of black money. Really, probably what it was with Diana Ross. She got like, um, you know, some of those kids are light, some of those kids are dark. Some of Diana Ross's kids. So that's what it really was. But y'all check out um, Lawrence Graham. Yeah, that Whitley, Whitney, Whitley, whatever, Gilbert. Now, Bill Cosby is in the boule. There's a lot of people, a lot of prominent black people in the boule. Um, the Eastern Star, that's boule. Whenever you, when y'all see that, the prominent black people in your city, you were, you was in a debutante pageant. And let me, Londa, those boule pageants, those are places to kind of hook up the kids. I know all about those pageants. They're real big on those those debutante balls and pageants to hook the children of the boule up with each other. Especially the light ones, the light on light type of shit. Dr. King was boule. Jesse Jackson is boule. Um, Sharpton is boule. Earl Graves, Black Enterprise, he's boule. You dig? Really, yeah, it's really kind of an offshoot of the Blue Vein Society. Most black so-called secret societies, they almost all started off because black people, you, no, we ain't got no goddamn secrets. But it started off as the offspring of the white supremacist male. You understand? That's how most of them started off. It started off with them being the offspring of the white supremacist male, and these mulatto Negroes did not want to associate themselves with black people, and they were not allowed to be associated with white society, so they formed their own secret societies. And historically, some of these niggas have been very dangerous. Now, Roland has admitted to being boule. Many times, Roland admits to being boule. Again, Skip Gates is Boule. The Roots, Ebony, all that, those are Boule publications. And the problem with the Boule, number one, the Boule oftentimes will do the bidding of the white supremacist society. I, am I Boule? Of course not. And number two, the Boule can't stand me. People in the Boule cannot stand me. This is why whenever y'all see that I'm attacked by certain publications, look into that background. I'm usually attacked by people connected with The Root, Ebony, or one of these other Boulay-run publications. Why? Because the Boulay, do, they don't like niggas from grassroots movements. Black men who rise up from a grassroots movement, they don't like them because that's their job. Wendy Wright, remember... Wendy Wright, when she was on the show, I got her to admit her mom was Boule. Her mom was Jack and Jill. I talk, and I want y'all to listen. Listen to these names. I've been throwing these names at y'all for years, years, years. When Wendy Wright, this lady from a radio station in Washington, D.C., 
Washington, D.C. is ground zero for those boule Negroes. All right? But go back, shit, damn near a decade ago. There was a woman named Wendy Wright. When Hidden Colors came out, this woman was on here talking about, well, Hidden Colors is offensive to white people. Why am I making a film like Hidden Colors that's going to offend white people? Those were her words. Y'all have to listen to this shit to even believe it. The way this woman was caping for white daddy was ridiculous. And she got some bedwinch sisters. All her sisters are hooked up with zaddies. So they were bedwinching it up. You, you, I want y'all to go back and listen to this. It's You gotta hear it to believe it. Wendy Wright. And as we were talking, because people were lighting her up, I said, wait a minute, Wendy, were you part of Jack and Jill? She's like, well, my mom was a member of Jack and Jill. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. You, you dig? Yes, Hidden Colors has exposed many publications, most the, of those old black media publications are boule run. Black, most of those black radio stations in your city used to be run by boule until um, a lot of these major corporations started to gobble up these stations. But the boule, they run all of these publications out here, or the old black publications and the old black media. There's a reason why, y'all notice, none of these black publications, these so-called black, old black, and I'm, I'm using the term old black to preference it, preference, to preface it, but none of those media outlets ever gave shine to hidden colors. The I was on TV one once to promote hidden colors on Rowley's show. The only reason I was on Rowley's show, because I hired a publicist who was white, a very well-respected white publicist in L.A., and the publicist called that one in. So that, even though I got on there, and, I, and the, the movie was already number one when I got on there. But I'm like, these niggas had to wait until my white publicist called them up in order to get me on here. I'm telling you facts. They had to wait till a white publicist gave them the green light. They know about the movie. These publications, they not only, they don't big up Hidden Colors, they denigrate it. These are the main ones that will denigrate the knowledge in the people in Hidden Colors. They go out of their way to talk down on it. Even though the Hidden Colors series is the most successful and well-known black history series in the world. Even though you got black people all around the world on the Hidden Colors train, these so-called black media organizations completely ignore it. And this is why black people do not take them seriously. And this is why these boule publications have been going downhill. You dig? So you got to understand. What's up, fam? What's up, Eric Garnett? You got to understand that many of these boule people, as our brother John Henry Clark said, are professional white ass kisses. Unfortunately, not all of them. There's some riders. There's some riders. You have a few in the mix, but... The, the coons are the most dominating force. And understand, some of these boule cats and some people from the links, they'll talk black, they'll talk civil rights, they'll talk it up. Some of them will talk up a real good game as far as civil rights, but they know how to pepper their words the right way. They know how not to go too far. What they'll do, they'll talk enough 
so that white mommy and white daddy will give them money to shut up. They'll talk enough so that white mommy and white daddy will give them a couple of dollars so they won't be too vocal about racial injustice. You understand? So they are appointed to being the black leaders of black society by then. When somebody comes out telling you that there's a black leader, most of the time it's somebody from the boule. Whenever they come out telling you that they got a black judge or a black prosecutor that they done pushed out there, it's boule. Y'all know, remember Philando Castile out there in Minnesota when they were investigating the cop and looking to um, file charges and federal charges and all this stuff, they paraded this black judge around. They were like, we got a black federal judge who's going to look into this and all this old stuff. And I immediately looked up his background. That nigga was boule like a motherfucker. On his resume, boule was on there. I said, oh, yeah, this Yanez is going to get off. When I saw that boule on this dude's resume, I said, uh, that means the, the officer's going to get off. When they start putting them, their boule minions on the case, you dig? It's a smoke screen. And understand, these dudes are talking, they'll talk black enough. They ain't going to go too far. They're not going to go too, too far with criticizing the white supremacists. They, they take it right here, then they'll stop. Then they back up off of it a little bit. Yeah. I saw that when Roly was on the Breakfast Club. Roly said it again. He said it before, but he said, "Yeah, my boule brother." Yeah, so Roly, you know, he, he's it's no secret. It's no secret. You dig? So watch out for the boule and the links. Watch those names. You got to watch out for those names. And again, all of them aren't bad. All of them are not bad. Real talk, Ola, they're just not going to ever go too deep. They're not going to go too hard. They're not going to go all the way in. They, they go in and then they back it up a little bit. Whereas with me, I go in and I don't stop going in. And then what happens is that folks start listening to me more than you listen to those boule appointed leaders. This is why they always attack me. They attack me all the time. You dig? Because, number one, with me, I am not looking for a job with the Democrats or anything like that. That's another thing. They get appointed by the white Democrats and the white liberals to do the bidding and help galvanize the black voters. Whenever you see people around Hillary and Bill and all that shit, usually it's some boule folks. So they will make enough noise until white mommy and white daddy gives them a job. And when that job is on the horizon, oh, there are the y'all saw how Roland was buck dancing with Hillary Clinton. Y'all saw that, right? A lot of them do that. You dig? Whereas with me, I don't want a job with the Democrats or none of them folks. I'm not trying to get a political position, but none of them. So I can just tell the truth and just tell it how it is. Thank you, Naomi. She look like my shirt. So when I tell it like it is, because number one, I'm not going to be in the business of trying to just get butter biscuits for myself. And as you saw, for example, at that Aretha Franklin funeral, that last buck dancing banjo plucking coon, Jasper Williams, who I think is Boule too, his eulogy and his rhetoric summed up a lot of the mentality of the Boule. That 
blacks just got to get closer to God. What about black on black crime? That sums up their mentality. Y'all blacks need to do better. It's that talented temp garbage. It is that talented temp thing where these appointed boule Negroes think that... Do you have extra for this? No, I don't, sweetie. Come here, come here, come here. What are the boys doing? Oh, come here, come say hi, sweetie. Nah. Come on and say hi. Nah. They're not coming Then I just go come in real quick and say what's up. You know, look at this right here. What's up? <laughs> look at this sexy goddamn thing. Show them your, your grades. These look raggedy. What's going on? What are the boys doing? Wow. Eating snacks. Okay, yeah, I'm on a cookie or some shit. Come here, come on. Smack that ass. Oh, um, I want a cookie. Animal, I want a, I want a cookie. I got a sweet tooth eating that. That, that, that I, I didn't like that food. That oh, food. I do. I have some cookies too. What kind? Butter, butter one. Butter cookie. Yeah. Fuck you, get a butter <laughs> cookie. From. A butter cookie. The fuck, I look yeah, like the sweet. gingerbread man. What's up? Yeah, we're really live right now. Somebody said we live. Somebody said, hey, that's peanut. This, who, who's this? Come here, so, <laughs> no. This sexy thing. Get over here, everybody. Get over here, everybody. I ain't gonna make one. one. This is Mama Peanut. We did. Lay off the sweets. Hell no. Hold on. I'm gonna lay off later on this week, but shit. Man. Yeah, I think Eric Holder might be boule too. Peanut State Prego. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah. um, but where'd you get the cookies from? Um, the store offering right now. It's for show. All right. But, um, yeah, I need a little boost me up. I'm tired. I run around. These kids went to a play place where they were running around and sliding and shit all over the place. Don't You don't think you dividing us? Talking to, I'm not talking about the coons. Uh -oh. I don't know. Who am I dividing? Who am I dividing? Peanut, Peanut has big feet. No, Peanut does not have big feet. Peanut has, um. What size feet my wife has? Size seven or eight? Her feet ain't that big. You know. Um, what the hell is this? The hell is this? Okay. I got it. Just, somebody said peanut has big feet. Are they big? What size do you wear? I wear a size eight. That's normal. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's why he don't got big feet. My toes are long. Yeah, she got some long ass antelope toes, but she ain't got no big feet though. Gummy. Told me like a hot fish. How it tastes. Mm -hmm. It's good. Not bad. See, they explain stuff. Mm -hmm. Butter, sweet butter cookie. Mm -hmm. That's some peanut butter. Hell no. And I hate eating. Eating on camera. I just need a boost. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of tired. Oh, this one. What's up? Oh, two dry one. Put that in the house. Uh, mm -hmm. Sloth toes, hilarious. No, they're not like that. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me go check on the board, see if they are. Right. Ooh, that crispy in here. Hey, this probably was that crispy too. I'm gonna get some alkaline water. You know, I hate eating while I'm talking. That's ratchet as hell. I really don't like when people be eating and talking, doing live broadcasts. I saw that annoys me. And then you have people. Y'all see these people who be eating on a microphone and making these sounds. I guess it's supposed to soothe people. It'd be like. I'm eating some pickles. I'm eating a cantaloupe right now. No, what the, what the, and people sit up and watch that shit for hours. ASMR, that's what it's called. 
Oh my God. Who be listening to that shit? Well, do niggas be getting off on that or something? Is that one list, one black lady, like this older sister, this big old weave? She's like, I'm eating some pickle pig feet. Pickle pig feet. So good. I'm eating red lobster. Okay, God damn. Yeah, it sounds almost pointish. It has an erotic sound. You know? You know what I don't like? And I noticed this. There's a lot of fake videos that people are doing. And World Star is really promoting these fake videos where people are getting in arguments in public and fighting in public, and it's clearly fake. And World Star be promoting that shit. Don't send that bullshit to me. Don't send that garbage to me. That shit is real corny. World Star is real lame for doing that. World Star is extremely lame for doing that. You know? And just like niggas are so fucking desperate for attention. It's just corny. Yeah, it'd be the same people. And even if it's not the, the videos. It's just like bad acting. You can tell it's fake. I saw one where they were in a, they were in McDonald's somewhere, and this hood chick with a big old ass yelling at a dude and throwing shit in his face. Why do you treat me like a child? You don't be treat me like no child. But it's cooning. That shit is coonery, coonery, coonery. And World Star, I'm calling because y'all know y'all play some of my stuff every blue moon, but World Star. Cut that stupid shit out. I know that you don't really have an obligation to bring any type of sensible content. I understand that. But the other dumb, fake bullshit, y'all got to do better than that. That shit is corny. And it's always some real coon shit that the white supremacists use against us. Y'all got to do better. You did? I don't watch Negroes fighting. Now, if somebody's stomping a white supremacist, yeah, you got me. I watch that. But black folks fighting each other, I don't watch that shit. I'm so not interested in seeing that. Because World Star, if you look in the chat room, it's nothing but white supremacists. So they said, fuck it. If I can't beat them, join them. So we're just going to make money off the damn white supremacists. But the video of the coon couples going around starting dumbass stereotypical arguments so they can get some YouTube hits, that shit is corny. The white supremacists love that shit. There was a pastor eating those butter biscuits, Clem. The V chick, some of her stuff is funny, you know, because you know she's clowning around. So you know she's clowning around. Some of the 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 some of it is a little overboard. But you know, she's a comedian. You know, so I get what she's doing. But some of these people who try to pass the shit off as reality is, come on, man. You dig? Oh, yeah, that Tyrone dude. I hated his shit. I'm Tyrone. I'm going to fuck your girl. Long dick style. That was coonery. That was coonery. And I think he knew what was coonery. 
You dig? A lot of people are still talking about the um, the Aretha Franklin funeral where they had Ariana Grande on there. Some people were talking about her dress being short. A lot of people were talking about the pastor who was who had his arm around her. They were talking about making it seem like he was groping her. And let me say this. Even though there were a lot of butter biscuit eating boule buffoons at that spot, I don't, the, I don't think the dude was groping her. I don't think that. Um, he was just talking to her and, you know, had his arm around her. So he was, I, I don't, I don't think he was groping her. His hand might have been just misplaced. I don't think he was groping her because we got to be careful about the shit that we jump on and the narratives that people are trying to create. Because those narratives are based on anti-black stereotypes. You understand? And... I saw something on Fox News where they were talking about that. They were talking about how the pastor was groping her and how all the people in the background were ogling over her. They they were on some old look at them looking at the white girl shit. They were on that type of shit. These oh look at these rapey black men. They were spinning it that way. No, that, that dude, no. No, I don't think this dude purposely tried to grab her damn titty on no stage. I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. You know. I, I just don't believe that. He was trying to do that in front of millions of people. I don't believe that. You, you dig? That's a very convenient narrative to run with because it's the old black man can't keep their hands off the white women. It's that type of thing. Yeah, pastors, you know, they hug everybody. Oh, hey, baby, you gave a donation? It's that type of shit. You dig? Because I don't want to hear shit about no damn black pastor groping somebody when you have whole white pastors out here fucking every child in the congregation. That shit is prevalent with them. You got these Catholic priests doing all types of shit. So let's, let's stop. The only, we're going to talk about somebody groping somebody. Let's look at them Catholic damn priests. You dig? So Chaka almost caught the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it, they were doing the most. They were doing the most. And while I'm talking, everybody, be sure to hit that, that link down below where you can contribute to Hidden Colors 5. You understand? But uh, I really hate that they did not allow the minister, Minister Farrakhan, to speak. They went out of their way to not allow Minister Farrakhan to speak. They let everybody in the mama talk except the minister. They didn't want the minister to get out there and break some shit down, but they let all the, the coon train folks jump on up there. You dig? But, you know, again, we gave our condolences to the family of Aretha Franklin, and Aretha Franklin had a hell of a life. And... Of a lot of stuff I was talking about the other day about the secrets of some of those 60s, those those black entertainers that came out of the 60s. And um, the the church, that was the New Bethel Church, right, that they had the, um, the ceremony at, that 10-hour ceremony. That was at New Bethel, wasn't it? I know the minister is not an HC5. I would like the minister to be an HC5. People are asking that. I would like the minister to be an HC5. I would like that. Why is the Breakfast Club holding my interview? Sometimes the Breakfast Club, you'll do an interview and they'll show it a few days later. So they might show it tomorrow. Hopefully, you know, they'll show it sometime this week. 
they you know they they do that sometimes. They have a lot of interviews backed up. But the reason why I even watched that long, because I was watching the shit for hours, really because I was waiting on Minister Farrakhan to speak. And that's why most people were, were watching it. We wanted to see what the minister was going to say. It was at Greater Grace Temple. Oh, all my D Detroit people, is New Bethel still in Detroit? Do they still have New Bethel Church? XZ, no, they're not trying to play me. Stop gossiping, nigga. Ego, no, he's not. Egg rushers, no. And notice, and I talked about all that plantation jubilee singing and dancing that was happening when, when the Clintons were there. You know, black folks was real extra when, all, when the white people were there. Black people were jumping around and doing all that buck dancing and singing. And I want y'all to notice, the only person who wasn't doing all that was Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan was not doing all that buck dancing and jumping around while everybody was having the Holy Spirit and doing all this old shit. Minister Farrakhan's just there chilling. You dig? When them white women came out there singing, everybody jumping up, <laughs> praise dancing, Minister Farrakhan's just sitting back there chilling. You dig? But most of you, including myself, we were waiting on the minister to speak. That's why we watched that long. You dig? And again, it, it, he was moved by Fantasia. Shout out to Fantasia. Did a good job. Fantasia, and I love Fantasia, but Fantasia, beloved, when you sing, and I love you to life, I love Fantasia, but Fantasia, when you get on that stage and you sing and you get the spirit and you take them shoes off, a little lotion wouldn't kill you. Fantasia has some of the biggest, widest, ashiest feet on a female R&B singer I've ever seen. And I love Fantasia, but beloved, you could have asked Stevie Wonder to get you a couple of dabs of cocoa butter. I know he had it. Even he can see the ash on your goddamn feet. My God, Fantasia. Lord, Fantasia, them bunions, baby. If you're going to kick your shoes off, wear some socks. My God, I love you. Yes, you better look. Them feet were ashy than a motherfucker. Her feet looked like she was doing the moonwalk in ashtray powder. God damn. Them feet were a motherfucker. I love, she got to call my dude from ashkicking.com. Say she had on stockings? No, well, them the bunions cut through the stockings because I didn't see no stockings. And don't she have a tattoo on her foot of a dragon? Her feet were so fucking ashy, the dragon flew away. My God. Fantasia, I love you, but them feet, you could have borrowed some goddamn lotion from Al Sharpton. I know he got some pink oil moisturizer from his hair somewhere. You could have used some of that. My God. Y'all take a look at the footage of Fantasia's fucking feet. Fantasia will kick them shoes off. I know them bunions probably hurt. That's why she kicked them off. But I'm like, well, damn, get your feet corrected. And uh, then Oprah was going to get her feet corrected. You did. You might. You might have to be infirm for a, a, a couple of weeks with your feet broke because they corrected your bunions. Nigga. Fantasia's bunions and corns, they look like an amusement park ride at goddamn Disneyland. And I love me some Fantasia. I love her to life. Fantasia will get it. I even think Fantasia's very sexy. She's a sexy little chocolate thing, got a nice little bubble on her. But so does her feet. They got bubbles on them too. So she kicked them shoes off. And I'm looking at them feet because I don't want her to scratch up the stage. 
with them hooves. You dig? My God. But I like Fantasia. I do. I like me. She sung her ass off. She did sing her ass off. She got busy. She did sing her ass. Fantasia is very sexy. Don't say that. Fantasia is a very sexy sister. She's very sexy. She's not bad looking. Very sexy. Got a little bubble on her. A lot of sex appeal. Love Fantasia. Look at my Fantasia. Fantasia can get it. Fantasia can get all of it. The thing is, if I give it to her, you're going to have to wear some fucking socks. That's my, that's my only prerequisite. That's it. But if I give it to you, please have on some footage. In your case, you can wear some Timberlands. Just show up in the bed butt naked with some fucking boots. Now smash. But let's not let one of them boots come off. And them bunions get caught up on my sheets. You then? Yes, she is. Fantasia is very sexy. Very sexy sister. You dig? Man. But, um, very interesting dynamic at the, um, at the event. You understand? So y'all gotta understand those boule cats. There's a lot of y'all in here. Everybody, y'all click below. Hit that. Let me see where we are with HC5. We need to be inching up. We need to get to that. We, we should be getting close to 100K. We need to be hitting that heavy. We have 61. Shout out to the family. We have 61K right now. Shout out to the family. And what, what people need to do, family, what I need for the family to do, is get the link from below of Indiegogo, HC5, Indiegogo. Share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Twitter. Can y'all do that for the family? Share it on your Facebook. Right now, just copy the link. Share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Twitter. Get everybody involved. There's 3,000, damn near 4,000 people in here. You dig? Did I see Oprah pushing abortion? No, I have not. Yeah, I did see the race soldier. He got sentenced to 15 years. He's probably going to do less than 10 for killing our brother down there. Um, you know, he should have gotten life, but they're not going to do that. They're, they're always going to give him the minimum. So we'll see. I, I would, I want to see him in jail before I even say, you know, this is the thing. You dig? Yeah, I did meet Queen of Four. Queen of Four is going to be in Hidden Colors 5. Queen of Four is a magnificent sister. Queen of Four is so deep and just has a, a loving and healing spirit. I love Queen of Four. You dig? Yeah, man, we really got to be about our self-defense business because I've been looking at videos. Somebody sent me a video earlier. Let me see if I can find it. Of these white supremacists, man, they are in training mode, heavy. These white supremacists, man, are out here training heavy. Man, they out here practicing. Man, they out here going to the range. They out here putting in work, man. We got to understand what we up against. And and no, right here. Like, let me show y'all some. Somebody sent me this video of um these sus these suspected. White supremacists is down here. Look at them. Hold oh, on, let me stop this music. Let me stop this music because I don't want, I don't want the music. All right, but that's, you know, some of these groups doing all this urban training and all this old shit. Who do you think they're doing it for? I'm not going to play the music because I don't want to get flagged on here. They flag me for every reason. But, um, yeah, man, they're out there at the range. They're out there doing jumping jacks. They're out there practicing hand-to-hand. You understand me? They out here getting it in. Look at them. They out here. This is some shit they doing. This is down in Tennessee, I think. 
Come on, man. These folks out here, while we fucking around, these people out here getting ready, man. That's just one video. I mean, there's all I could show y'all this shit all day. I can show y'all videos like that all day. They got their kids out there. These people out here planning and training. These people are getting ready, family. While we got niggas out here twerking and booty popping, these folks are out here getting ready and training. This is why and, and I, I put people up, and let me, I, I just found this out too. Y'all know I put people up on the, the black gun range and um, um, some of the um, black gun stores. My people who own one of the black gun stores, they hit me up. They were like, the white supremacists are harassing them. The white supremacists are harassing them. You know, they're, they're doing shit like sending pizzas to their homes. So the my, my family, my people who own the black gun store, who they do training and all this stuff, the white supremacists are targeting them and, and, and harassing them. Because that's what you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to, black folks are not supposed to be on that defense thing. You understand? When we start talking about defending ourselves, when we start talking about learning that gun game, all of a sudden, the white supremacists start waking up. So what's my thoughts on Obama not showing up to the funeral? That That's symbolic of his presidency. He went to John McCain's funeral. The other, um, Minister Farrakhan was not going to be nowhere near Farrakhan and all these other people. You know, he's still trying to get, get some after-president money. He, he needs money. And understand, I don't. Obama's not in the boule. He's not boule, so he kind of transcended them, you know, because the white mommy and white daddy walked him in above the boule, so he didn't come up through the ranks of the boule. So yeah, he's not a boule guy. So he, he really, you don't fuck with him too much. That's why, you know, Tavis Smiley... Um, you know, he they had that that black state of the black union and Obama wouldn't go when they were mad because Obama, he don't fuck with the boule like that. You know, Obama don't fuck with that boule crowd because he he didn't need them. The the white powers that be brought him in over that boule crowd. You understand? Who don't need money? Who are you talking about? You did? Oh, yeah, the Hodge twin. Yeah, they're coons. I saw those niggas. They're coons. What's up, Jack and Jill in the building? What's up? Yeah, so Obama, he wasn't about to be connected. He wasn't about to have his face shown next to Farrakhan. You dig? But we got to understand this. This is why HC5 is so important. HC5, we're going to show you the, the black warrior class and how the black warrior class used to get down and what went wrong with the black warrior class. We're going to talk about when we had the black warrior class and what went wrong. Because let's, let's break it down real quickly. Understand, speaking of Aretha Franklin, you know her dad, C.O. Franklin, her dad, C.O. Franklin, was a very connected dude in Detroit. He was large. Reverend C.O. Franklin was a he was like a, a mega preacher back in the, the 50s and 60s. C.O. Franklin was the dude, especially in Detroit. And I think I want to say that he was connected with the boule. He was connected with a lot of those civil rights guys. But if I'm not mistaken, I think that C.O. Franklin might have been Boule. You understand? Now, C.O. Franklin did good things. He was also a goddamn pervert. Understand this. Reverend C.O. Franklin, Aretha Franklin's dad, he did good things, but C.O. Franklin was a goddamn pervert. 
I'm, let me break that down. Let me break that down, Rakeem. Let me break down C.O. Franklin. For, yeah, he was a funder. He funded Dr. King. You did my show on Jack and Jill. You, were you the guy who called up Joseph? No, let me, let me, let me, no, let me, let me break some shit down. Let me break down some facts. Um, C.L. Franklin, yeah, he, he funded a lot of stuff in the civil rights movement, too. That's why um, um, Aretha did, you know, she was all mixed in with the civil rights movement. But I think that C.L. Franklin was boule because of all the strange sexual activity that went on with the church that so many people co-signed. And I, I talked about that on my last broadcast, but C.O. Franklin, he was a perv. That's just, that's real. C.O. Franklin fathered a child by a 12-year-old in the 1940s. All right? He fathered a child by a 12-year-old, one of the members of his church. He was a molester. Yeah, he was a chester. That's what it is. He fathered a child by one of the women. Well, not even a woman, it's a girl in the church, yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. The woman gave birth right before her 13th birthday. The girl, I keep saying woman, girl, girl, girl. Am I sure? Go look it up. I think the, 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 the child he had might still be alive now. Thinking it was Carolyn or Carol something. I forgot what the name was. So this is a, this this happened. This happened. Also, when Aretha Franklin had her child at 12, a lot of people thought that the dad was the father. They thought that Aretha Franklin's first child was by her dad. That was a rumor in Detroit for a long time. Some people still think it's true. Some people said the dad was some other dude, but yeah, Aretha Franklin had a child at 12 and another one by the time she was 15. But the first child, I think they even named the child after her dad, which further made people think something was going on. Okay? A lot of shit y'all don't know here. No, Aretha Franklin had her first child at 12 and the other one at 15, or even before her 15th birthday. Yeah, they said the wife left him because he was into too much freaky degenerate shit. You understand? Okay, this CJ next to win. Y'all block him. This nigga talking about he gonna eat my booty. Block that nigga. That might be that exotic Rodney nigga. And that's another thing. Ladies, there's a moist coon on Instagram named Exotic Rodney. And he was trolling on the live stream, we were clowning his name because this nigga's name is hilarious. Exotic Rodney is the funniest fucking name ever. But this nigga, some of the women were hitting me up like, hey, this nigga's DMing pictures of his dangling and shit. So y'all block that nigga. I blocked him. He's doing the most. But Exotic Rodney is a real moist nigga that's on the chat room that was in the, the Instagram on some bullshit. But back to C.O. Franklin. Like I said, Aretha was part of the links. That's why I'm thinking that CL was most likely a boule guy. But the thing is, CL was very clicked in in Detroit. And the thing is, in 1969, there was an organization that had a meeting at the New Bethel Church, at CL Franklin's church, the organization was called, I think, Republic of New Africa. They were like a black power organization. And they had a, an infamous meeting at the church. The police came and there was a shootout. And a white cop got killed. Right? They were connected with the New Bethel Church. I mean, the, this, this shooting was connected with the church, all right? There was a shootout between this black organization. 1969. The, a couple of other cops got injured, but Brothers was bringing it to their ass. 
And what happened, the police came and just started arresting everybody who was at this meeting at C.O. Franklin's church. So C.O. Franklin, he called up like a black judge. What is that black? I can't think of the black judge's name, but the black judge went down to the police station and he got all the black people released. Only two people remain. And also they used some of those connections in Detroit to get the the people off. So the people who were accused of shooting these cops actually got off. So the white people around Detroit, the white police officers, because there was a lot of white cops in Detroit at that time. And the white people were mad as fuck at not only C.O. Franklin, but they were mad at the judge and they were they were mad at the black folks getting on code to get one of their own off after a white cop got shot. You understand? This is why Detroit has always been attacked. That's one of the reasons why they, they didn't want to have black people exercising any kind of real power in Detroit. So that's when the, the state stepped in and they started enacting certain laws and um, pro prohibitions, things like that. Things that would prohibit them to have power on a local level. Yeah, there was a riot in Detroit. So, you know, black folks were really, really ready to turn up in Detroit. But the fact that the black political structure flexed their muscle and got on code, the white supremacists in the whole state of Michigan said, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. We got to start enacting certain rules and laws. We got to change some of these laws around so these niggas don't come in running shit on a local level against us. This is why when you look at the Flint situation, the, the governor, the state has final say, so they can come in and just kind of supersede everything. It's, you know, they, they did a lot of twisting and turning with the law right after 1969 when they started letting all those black dudes come on up in the, 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 the political arena. They had to change the rules around them. You understand? Yeah, man, real heavy. And also, um, Reverend C.O. Franklin got shot. They tried to kill him in 1979. So 10 years later, he got shot in what they claimed to be a home invasion. But they shot him at point blank range and put him in a coma for like five years. So he remained in a coma until like 1984 when he died. You, you dig? So there has always been a lot of conspiracies about the shooting of C.L. Franklin. There's always been conspiracies. But the fact that black folks back then were more about that life, they would bring it to those in the dominant society real quick. That's why in the 70s, you didn't see them fucking with black folks like that at a major level. On some direct combat, but nah. 69 was a dope year. All yeah, around that whole time, late 60s, early 70s, black folks weren't playing games like that. Let's go back to the Nation of Islam since we're talking about Minister Farrakhan. And a lot of this stuff we're gonna cover in the new HC5. This is why family, the family has to get up on this thing. The family, you. We need all hands on deck so we can get information like this out. Y'all ain't never heard this before. This information is buried. We're breaking all of this information down in HC5. The Nation of Islam started in Detroit, but let's go, let's go deep. In 1972, there was an incident with the Nation of Islam um, in New York, in Harlem. I want to say Mosque 7. I forgot which mosque it was, but they were having a... a, a, a a, a school at the mosque, somebody called in a fake 911 call. Same thing as swatting as they do now. They've been doing that. That swatting shit ain't nothing new. I want y'all to understand this. Swatting is nothing new. They try to give it a new name and act like it's new, but they've always called in fake 911 calls so the police can come in blasting. 
So somebody called in a fake 911 call to the mosque in New York. This happened in April 1972. Police came. They ran past the desk and no warrant, just kind of ran up in there talking about, hey, we got a 911 call. There's a situation here. So the brothers there at the mosque was like, nah, y'all police going to have to get out of here. And they tried to bogart their way in. And some of the brothers from the Nation of Islam got into a scuffle, took the guns from the officers. One of the officers ended up getting shot. And they ran them on up out of there. And more cops came, more backup came. And then from what I understand, Minister Farrakhan came up there with, um, I think, Charlie Rangel. He came up there with him and let them know, we got the community backing us up. Y'all you, you, not going to come up here with that bullshit. And all of Harlem came out. It was about to be a major riot in Harlem. Because folks, folks came out just like that within minutes. All of Harlem was in the streets ready. They were flipping over cop cars. They were ready within minutes. So they had to get all the white cops out of there because the white they were throwing bricks at their ass. It was about to be on in Harlem. You understand? They had to pull all the white cops out of there. And they left a few coon cops up in there. But they had to back down. The police in New York had to back down. Y'all ain't never heard that. That happened in Harlem at Harlem number seven. That's what I thought. Shout out to Henry Muhammad. You, you did? The minister was already upstairs. He came downstairs to join. Okay, I heard he showed up with Charlie Wrangell. I've heard different versions of it. You, you, you dig? But I'm telling you, and I've seen footage of it. I've seen archive footage of Har Harlem showed up and showed out, nigga. All of Harlem showed up. It was They were ready. They were about to turn all the way the fuck up. And the police said, no, nah, we don't want them kind of problems. You dig? See, that's when people, the warrior spirit was still there. Yeah, y'all had never heard of that. I've never heard of that. And that's why they got a bug up their ass about Minister Farrakhan now. The minister, the, the, the minister helped shut down a lot of their bullshit. You dig? Brothers weren't playing no games with these white supremacists like that, dude. That's why they had to, you know, get their agents and informants. They had to do things in a more covert manner. You dig? Governor Cuomo was talking about making SWAT calls a hate crime. Yeah, right. They've been doing that shit since the 60s, dude. They've been doing that since the 60s. Making fake calls so to justify running up in people's spots. Yeah, it's that old COINTELPRO thing. They, and remember, at, after 1969, that COINTELPRO thing was in full effect. They were just running up on black organizations, blasting. And the leader, the, the, the Nation of Islam, was like, you ain't going to do that in here. You did? You never heard that. Of course, they, they, the mainstream media, they keep that buried. Oh, they keep that real. They keep it buried. They're not going to tell you that. And these Negroes, these handpicked Negroes who work for the media, they're not going to tell you either because they don't want to affect, they don't want to offend mommy and daddy. This is why it's important, family, to get down with the hidden colors call to action so that you can get this information and much, much more. This is information that our children need to know. This is information that our children need to know. We need to know our history and understand that we weren't always a bunch of ass-licking coons. We weren't a bunch of pacifists. 
We were not always a bunch of Negroes singing spirituals while we're getting hit in the head with sticks. You know, we, we got to know this information so that people can draw power from that. You, you dig? Yeah, that's exactly what, what happened to Fred Hampton. They just ran up in there blasting. They ran up in Fred Hampton's home blasting. Oh, yeah, we're going to, like I said, that USS Kitty Hawk, all this stuff, all this stuff in the early 70s, I'm telling you, in the early 70s, black folks was whooping ass. In the early 70s, black folks was kicking ass and taking names. Black people weren't playing games with these white supremacists. They were bringing it to their ass. You dig? Real talk, DJ Blue. Yeah, we saw what they were doing to us, and we're like, well, shit. The way they ran up on Fred Hampton, the way they tried to assassinate Asada Shakur, Black folks was like, well, damn. We might as well go for hours. Since they're going to try to kill us anyway, we might as well go for it. Yeah, but a lot of folks don't know. They don't want to tell you that about it. black folks getting on code immediately and, and, and getting ready to put in some work and flipping over cars and busting back on people when our constitutional rights were violated. They don't want to show you that. They want to show you John Lewis. They want to show you these Negroes who, who sat down and prayed and got coffee thrown on them at a, at a wool, at the Woolworths counter. They want to show you that. They want to, you got to be nonviolent Negroes. They love preaching that nonviolent, nonviolent. They love that. And coon Negroes now, in order to get into good graces with white mommy and white daddy, you got to promote that nonviolent bullshit too. They got you talking nonviolent while they are practicing in the woods, shooting, fighting, and stabbing. Like the video I just showed you, that's so common. I'll be here all day showing you videos of different militia camps of them sitting around practicing warfare. You dig? But they're teaching you how to sing about your problems. No, that's not what you do. You work with a major coon? Yeah. And like I, I was talking about coons the other day, I was talking about women being on the job with bed winches and coons. Now my daughter, and this is this, if I bring it home, my daughter had a little job because she was learning responsibility. I wanted to teach my daughter responsibility, so I allowed her to go out there and get a job, just to get into the workforce and just to to kind of be independent, so she's not completely dependent on. Because up until her 18th birthday, I just kind of gave my daughter everything. So I'm like, now nah, she's an adult. I can't have her thinking that I'm going to come to the rescue. So I want her to get out here and just kind of learn the world, learn the politics of working for somebody else so that when you start working for yourself, you can appreciate it more. You understand? My daughter is 18 years old. Beautiful child. My daughter is absolutely beautiful. And my daughter had to quit her job today. She quit her job. I told her she should have just waited until she got fired. But she quit today. Which they might have, they were probably going to fire her anyway, I don't know. But she worked at a little uh, a clothing boutique. And from what I understand, I think the owner was white. I think the owner was white. And there was a, a little bedwinch manager that was running the store, working under my daughter. No, my daughter was working under her, I'm sorry. My daughter was working under her. Got it? So the manager was a, another black girl who was actually, and I found out today, she was only one year older than my daughter. She was like, this girl is 19 or 19 or 20, something like that. But 
this girl was giving my daughter a hard time. Nitpicking at every little thing. There can only be one token, real talk. So my daughter just tell me how the girl, this Negro bedwench manager, just kept nitpicking. Oh, you, you coming to work with, I don't like your makeup. I don't like what you're wearing. You, you understand? It was that type of thing. And my daughter said the, the chick would have an attitude with her. The chick would be rolling her eyes at my daughter. You understand? I talked about this the other day. And, you know, the, 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 this bedwitch was getting into arguments, just trying to start arguments with my daughter. And my daughter's like, oh, my God. Just every little thing. My daughter said, shit, my daughter left. She's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to just leave. I just leave for the day. You, you dig? And my daughter FaceTimed me. She's like, Dad, this, this chick at the job, my manager keeps just bothering me. I, I got to leave. I just can't take this. And that's what it was. And then my my daughter's mother, you, she's really on some other shit. <laughs> she would have been, went off on the chick. Like, you ugly, you just mad because my daughter looked better than you. I was like, oh, don't, don't, don't send your mama up there, Lord. Uh, you <laughs> so my daughter, her mama went up there because uh, her mom had to pick her up from there because it's you know, down and farther away from where, where I'm from. But, yeah, the mom went up there clowning. You dig? And it sounded like jealousy. It, it, it sound, it's that old bedwinch jealousy, like I said. And my daughter ain't no bedwinch, so she didn't have anything to worry about. I've taught my daughter not to be nobody's fucking bedwinch. So these bedwinches, whenever there's another attractive black girl who shows up, oh, they're going to raise, it's, it's a reign of terror. It's a reign of terror. And her mama went up there cussing the girl all the way out. I'm like, please don't let your mama whoop that girl's ass. Please go get your mom. And I was just talking about this the other day. I was just talking. No, yeah, my daughter's nice. I taught her how to, you know, my, my daughter's real cool. She don't be arguing with folks. That ain't my daughter at all. My daughter's real bougie acting. So my daughter, was, she'll just leave. She ain't about to be up there arguing back and forth and all that old stuff. But my daughter was like, I, I just, she just, everything I do, she just keeps rolling her eyes at me and just, just looking for a reason to just hate on me. You dig? And I, I told y'all the other day, these bed wenches, because it sounds like that chick is probably fucking the white boss. No, no, Mama Peanut is not her mother. No, 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 no. Mama Peanut is the stepmother of my daughter. No, no, no. No, no, no. It wasn't Mama Peanut. It wasn't Mama Peanut. No, it wasn't her. But, you know, the, these bedwinches get up here around White Daddy, and they get their little perks. That's why they become manager, because White Daddy, they, they, they done done something strange for a little piece of change, and Daddy elevated them to manager. And any kind of attractive black girl who gets hired... Oh, they go out of their way to shit on them. And, uh, I, you know, and my daughter has to see this firsthand. She's learning life. You know, letting her know, don't be bothered by it. This is life. When you go work somewhere and there's a, a potential bedwinch working there, this is what you're going to deal with. You're going to deal with a hating, angry, sabotaging bedwinch who's trying to undermine you. You dig? So this is why I'm, I'm teaching her the value of owning your own shit. But in order to appreciate that, you got to see what it is to be in the workplace and deal with other people's politics. You dig? Of course, let's imagine Diamond and Silk as your manager. You dig? Yeah, my daughter's a very cute... My daughter's just model less. She's beautiful as she can be tall, beautiful. So, you know, the chick wasn't all that cute from what I understand. <laughs> but, you know, that was a problem. You have a bedwinch manager. 
You know, ladies, y'all know how it is. Ladies, y'all know how it is. You know, when you go to work and you look a little better than a mammy, bedwinch manager or the old chick at the job, oh, they be on your ass. You dig? No, I'm not going to give y'all my daughter's Instagram because sometimes niggas be on there real thirsty. Your old black male supervisor, he's always harassing you, micromanage. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep telling y'all, these and these bedwinches are worse with, with sisters. Because you direct competition. They, they, they don't like no black men. That's we that we understand that off rip, but they don't like your ass either as a black woman. They can't stand another black woman. Especially who's attractive. Oh, hell no. You did? Yeah, and them frumpy white female managers are the same way. Them frumpy, you they won't even hire your ass. If there's a frumpy white female, no. They really are funny style. You ain't going to last a day with them. If there's a white female manager and a sister gets hired, nah. No, oh, Lord. Especially if they frumpy and an attractive sister comes in, that woman, will, the, the white woman will quit. They will quit. You only got your job because it was the phone interview? Yeah. Yeah, but even if you get hired at a job and there's a white male supervisor or whatever, and you're a fine black woman, it's the white, the other white co-workers, the white female co-workers that do little slick shit to you. They were looking at me and regretted hiring me. You've been catching hell, yeah, yeah. Sadly, you always hire by frumpy. Black women don't hire me. Now, they like a sister who's kind of thick, you know, or chunky or whatever. They like that. They don't mind that. Serena, she was defending the dude who banned her cat suit. Okay, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. What's up, checking in from Tampa. Shout out to Tampa. Shout out to Tampa. Yeah, they like if um, th those white women hire sisters at the job, they like, they love a hood rat. One thing they like, they like a hood rat. Hood rats are entertaining to them. They like hood rats to put in the front. And they all, and not only that, if you do manage to get hired, you know, at, at a job, and usually they like to put the sisters in the front to make it look more diverse. You know, the, the white male manager or the white male supervisor, they'll hire you. And if there's other white women around, you know, they'll try to treat you like some kind of charity case. You ever notice that? They'll sometimes they'll they'll be overly nice to you, but it'll be patronizing. Hi, Shaquita. I brought some leftovers from Chipotle that you can take to your family. Have there any white person ever tried to pull that shit on you, giving you some fucking leftovers? I, we've had that done to us before. I had that done to me and some folks over in um, the UK. Have they ever did that shit? 
Shout out to my UK folks. I was in the UK and that shit happened. <laughs> Nigga. I had that shit happen to us before. <laughs> Nigga. Some of these people are so fucking condescending, they'll try to give you some leftovers. Like, I know you're downtrodden. You can have some of my Olive Garden. I didn't eat it all. <laughs> and they say that shit like they're just doing you a favor. I was in the UK. I was doing a lecture out there. And um, shout out to my brothers and sisters, the promoters. I was... We're having a dinner at a very nice restaurant. They took me out, and it was a white party at another table. And we talking, and we got some black, blackity black, black folks. We talking black shit. You think? Well, we're real cool. You know, we, we chopping it up. And the folks from the table, after they finished, they left, and they had some um, some brownies. And they were like. It was a white woman. She's like, hey, guys, we're about to leave. We uh, we had some brownies. We didn't really eat them, eat them all. We didn't want them to go away, so we'll give them to you. And left the brownies on the table. And I remember my brothers, after they left, they were like, they got them brownies and threw them shits the fuck back to their table. <laughs> like, if they didn't get this the hell out of here. And my UK, to hear a UK person, they, they're so polite. This fucking wanker. Tried to give us brownies? <laughs> the nerve of her. They're, they're polite with their shit over there. They looked at me like, if they don't get this shit out of here, the fuck we look like, pets? The people, I can't remember what the white people were. I can't remember if I, if I heard an American accent or... Um, I can't remember. Yeah, that's my UK accent. Y'all very polite with your insults. This blow a wanker should go fuck her mother. <laughs> the insults are just so polite. They gave us some brownies. Like, get the hell out of here. Oh my God. But yeah, they'll try to do that. They'll try to treat you like a charity case. You know, we we do we don't know. We ain't eating that. But notice, black people, even when you're not at your job, people in the dominant white society, they want to know. You notice, they always have to to know what you do for a living. So they can gauge on how much respect they should give you. They always want to know what you do for a living. So that way they can judge how much respect they're going to give you. Hey, buddy, what do you do for a living? I'm a janitor. Okay, you mind putting my bag up there for me? They'll treat you like a damn janitor. You understand? They like to size us up to figure out how much respect they're going to give us. Especially, and I always talk about riding in first class. When you ride in first class, it's something about the suspected white supremacist woman more than any other. They have to know what you do. The white dudes, I've been on planes and sitting next to white guys, and they just keep, they, they don't say nothing. They're cool. I've never been somewhere like first class or some kind of expensive place next to a white woman who did not want to know what the fuck you did for a living. It, I've never, every single time, if I'm on first class and there's a white woman sitting next to me, I'm already getting my mind prepared for her bullshit. <laughs> I'm already knowing. It's, it, it, she's not going to get off that plane without getting some damn answers. They want some, man. They nosy as fuck. The white supremacist female, nothing is more nosy than a white supremacist female. That's why when you see all these black people with the cops called on them, it's the white supremacist female. 
what, what, what are you doing here? Why are you barbecuing with no permit? Then nosy as fuck. Why are you swimming here and I don't see... I'm going to need you to see your swim card. They, they, they're like that, dude. They're like that all the time. They're nosy as hell. They got to know all your business. When you show up, they, they want answers. Just like that Joanne, Leanne Tui, Joanne Tui, whatever her name is, the lady from the, 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 the movie The Blind Side is based off of, and I talked about this years ago, um... I think she owns a restaurant or something, and some black kids went inside the, the place. I don't even know if it was her place, but they went inside, and some brothers went inside to charge their phone. They were sitting there charging their phone, and she walked up to them. Okay, what are you guys doing here? Okay, spill it. She was on some shit. Like, tell me what y'all doing. And they were like, well, we're just trying to charge our phone. We just, you know, our phone died. We just wanted to charge our phone. So she gave them some some money for bus fare and then took pictures with him and propped herself up like these guys were in the store charging their phone and I asked them what they're doing and they just wanted to charge their phone so they because they didn't have enough money so I gave them some money to go home on the bus aren't I great man we went off lady please you're going to profile these guys and then act like you some kind of white savior because you gave him some bus money? Fuck out of here, lady. Yeah, they love trying to pull that charity thing on us. It was KFC. Okay, so it wasn't even her spot. Oh, damn. Okay, so it wasn't even her spot. I forgot about that. So it wasn't even her place. So it's that whole thing. We got to police the Negroes. But every time I'm in first class, the white woman, they, they especially they get a couple of drinks. They get them drinks. So what do you do? I, I do a bunch of shit. I, 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 I'm... I hate nothing more than sitting up having that conversation. Y'all really don't understand how much I hate that conversation. But I try to be cool so I don't cuss these folks out. So what do you do? I do a lot of stuff. You look like you play basketball. <laughs> that's all. That's the next one. Oh, no, I don't play no fucking basketball. I don't. No, no I don't. Usually, I, I say I do real estate. I do it. I, I say that. I just say I do real. I just keep it real vague. You dig? Because I, I don't want them all in my business. Sometimes I like to keep it 100 and watch them change their whole vibe. Like I said, when I was in Haiti, when, I, when we were in Haiti, we were shooting 1804. And, um, and I told, I told y'all this before we went to, um, we were in, in uh, Port-au-Prince and we flew up to, um, Cap Haitian over there by, um, in the Northern part. And we're at the it was a small airport. We got there and I had my camera crew with me. And there was this white Christian group. All of them had the same T-shirts on. So, you know, these white mission groups, you know, they be in there finessing. So me and my camera guys are, are there. And I had on a tank top and I had my tattoos showing. And they, they kind of knew that I wasn't from there because um, Haitian cats don't really have tattoos like that. They just don't. So I kind of stood out. And um, there's one white girl from the the, the Christian group. Uh, hey, you guys from the States? Yeah, 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 we're from the States. Oh, great. Yeah, we're from the States too. We're um, we're a mission group. But we're, we're out here feeding some of the kids and, and helping with school supplies. And, you know, cool. That's okay. That's okay. So what are you guys doing here? So, yeah, we're here doing a, a documentary film. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, we're, we're thinking about doing a documentary, you know, about, about the orphanages here and, um, you know, talking about the earthquake. You know, we're, we're, 
um, some of our pastor is talking about doing that. I mean, she was all chipper and excited, just patting herself on the back. You know, we're teaching people, you know, we're giving away Bibles. I mean, she was chipper as fuck. And while she's talking, she's like, so you're doing a documentary. What's your documentary about? I said, well, we're doing a documentary about the Haitian Revolution on how Dessaline got all the French off the island and made this an independent republic. Nigga, when I say this woman's face did a 380, <laughs> a 180, 380, nigga, I said that. Boy, the chipperness went all over. That shit went out the window. I said, yeah, we're doing a, a documentary about the Haitian Revolution. So, okay, well, you guys have a safe flight. <laughs> she got the fuck on up out of there. She ended that conversation quick. When you start bringing up Dessaline, <laughs> all that conversation changed and ended. It, went, it didn't change. It ended. Oh, you one of them. Okay. Well, have a nice day. You dig? They don't want to talk no more. You talk to somebody over in Haiti and then you start mentioning Dessaline. Some of these white, white supremacist suspects. Oh, Lord. So, oh. That type of documentary. Oh, no, it, it ain't going to be about no orphanage. No, we ain't doing no documentary about no earthquake, no orphanage. We talking about y'all and how y'all got ran up out of here. Oh, well, look at the time. It's a 180, not the 180. My bad. 180. I said 380. 180. My bad. Niggas nitpicking on shit. Yes, of course I've been to Latin America. You did? What's your question, Lisa? What's happening in South Africa? I hope my brothers and sisters in South Africa get it popping. Boy, they don't want to talk about that Haitian Revolution. They avoid that conversation with the quickness. They don't want to talk about that. They'll talk about black folks getting the shit kicked out of them, but they, them taking an L, they don't like talking about that. You dig? They're sending racist missionaries to Uganda. Like, they're doing that all over. I'm not taking calls. Was Tupac and Malcolm part of the bullet? No. Absolutely not. What makes you think? No, Malcolm wasn't. Now, Betty Shabazz, after Malcolm died, they put her in the links. Now, Betty Shabazz is in the links, or was in the links. But what made you think Tupac was part of the boulet? What What made you think that? That's random. That's a hell of a random question that's so not true. What made you think that? Yeah, Betty Shabazz was in the links. Yeah, she's adult. she was in the links. This is documented. Some YouTuber said that. Dude, come on, man. Y'all stop believing dumb niggas on YouTube. YouTube is full of dumb, babbling niggas who just say shit just to get a click. Okay, somebody says she's trolling. Okay, you might be trolling. Okay, I don't know, but come on, man. Don't, don't quote random mushmouth niggas on YouTube who can't back up nothing with any kind of scholarship. Niggas say anything to get a click. And I, I've seen some of those videos where niggas are talking about to, uh, um, Tupac was part of the Baphomet. Tupac had put his finger up like this, which is a sign of the Illuminati. What Tupac must not have understood when he had pledged the Illuminati, where they were setting him up for a failure. It's, 
yo, don't, don't, don't give me mush mouth nigga shit, and then we try to validate it. My God. I don't stop believing mush mouth niggas. Mush mouth Jay-Z was in the Illuminati niggas. Jay-Z threw up the Rockefeller side. That is the pyramid that we see on the dollar. The dollar and the pyramid in the eye. The eye, that eye is Beyonce looking. And the Illuminati has orchestrated this. Yeah, yeah. Come on. This dumb mush mouth nigga shit. Niggas be saying, if I wipe my face and they get a still shot of it, Tariq Nasheed is doing a symbol. This is a symbol of the Bilderbergs. This shows that it is the Bilderbergs have funded Hidden Colors secretly. They secretly funded the Hidden Color thing. It is orchestrated by the, the conspirators. I don't know what's dumber. That mushmouth nigga that we always see on YouTube is dozens of mushmouth niggas. What's more it's dumb, them niggas or the people who listen to the Mushmouth niggas? Because that's the thing. You got motherfuckers who sit up and listen to Mushmouth niggas and be in the streets. Man, did you know that Beyonce is a reptilian? I heard this nigga on YouTube saying it. Beyonce is really a reptilian. That's why on her album cover, if you look real close, you can see scales. If you look real close and look under her weave, you see a tail. Come on, we we grown ass niggas be having this stupid type of conversation. Because niggas want to be children forever. So niggas sit up and have these asinine, childish, dummy ass conversations because that stops you from growing the fuck up. Talking dumb stops you from being an adult and getting off your ass and grinding. It's easy to be a big old elderly baby. These niggas old as hell talking elderly baby shit. You got niggas in their late 50s talking about, man, you know what I seen? I thought Tariq Nasi was doing a lecture. I, I, if you look close, he had feathers come up. The feathers came up in three milliseconds of a minute. It came up real fast and it disappeared. That's proven that that is... Of a symbol of the owl. You understand? And the owl is part of the, the, the Bilderberg Committee where they have their annual meetings in a submarine under the North Pole. Tariq is a part of all that. These are old niggas talking this. Old, dusty-ass niggas talking this. You dig? Yeah, yeah, normally I put the list because them niggas be having a lisp. It's always a nigga with a lisp. But that keeps you in a childlike disposition where you don't really have to grow up. You can be an old nigga talking these asinine conspiracies that don't make no sense that they didn't got from David Icke and Alex Jones and all these people. You did? Angels nup nup. Oh, th that nigga is retarded. That nigga is so stupid. Where, and where is he from? He He's an idiot. Angels nup nup. He's been around for years. He's such a fucking idiot. I had to get on that nigga because he would, he'd be bootlegging my movies. And I, I have to flag this nigga all the time. He's an old troll. Angels nup nup. He has a stupid ass name. Look like he's from like Nigeria, Ghana, somewhere. Where is he from? Justin, what what are you asking me that for? But Angels Nup Nup, that's another one. He's an old, decrepit. His name is this nigga be saying some of the dumbest shit. This nigga name. Let me find a video from this nigga. Hold on. Angels Nup Nup. That's his name. And, uh, this nigga be trying to bootleg my movies. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to find. Let me see if I can find something from this stupid ass dude. 
angels. Nope, nope. Hold on. Maybe they banned this nigga. Okay, I can't find none of his videos. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can find this dude. Sorry, y'all. Y'all rock with me, but here he is. Okay. He has some shit called the Reality Temple. Now, some of these niggas might be agents. And, and plus, this nigga don't get too many views. Don't black YouTube niggas. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay, this old nigga, hold on. Hold on. This is an old troll. In the name of my ancestors. Look at this cool. Peace forever and always. And welcome to another edition of what I call the Reality Step on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the host or gatekeeper of this particular program. Known here on social media and around the world. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snup Nup 7, I am your soul brother number one, and your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I want to say how I feel. I feel so sad. I feel... I am filled with great sorrow. This goes on forever. I mean, it, it, it ain't going nowhere. Okay, I mean, this is this is an example of the mush mouth nigga. This is it. Just, it goes nowhere. Okay, so you sitting around waiting like, okay, where's this going? Nowhere. <laughs> All right, I, I don't want to waste no more of your time. Y'all, like, where the fuck is this going? Not a goddamn place. This nigga has thousands of videos. Just nigga rambling. I feel. <laughs> oh. Welcome to my show. I am your host, Angel Nup Nup. At this present moment, I feel reinvigorated. I'd like to talk about the rejuvenation in my spirit. First of all, I'd like to give honor and praise to the Most High, and that will be Buddha. Second of all, I'd like to say I am still on a vegan diet. I am trying to enlighten my pineal gland so that I can recalcify the pineal gland and then uncathify so I can send out wave signals to the extraterrestrial combatants that I've been in communication with. It's just hours of nigger babble. And this old nigger's been trolling me for years, that one particular nigger. Hold on, let me, let me find... Some of his videos where, where he trolled me. Hold on. I don't listen to his shit, but just a couple of seconds. Hold on. Let me see if he got any videos talking about me. They probably got all, all taken down or something. Okay, I can't find them. Hold on. Okay, I can't find them. Because I think, you know, some of the some of the troll videos, YouTube has kind of cleaned up a little bit. They they don't let niggas just be blatant trolls. Wait, okay. Okay, uh, my name is on this one. Oh, let me see if this nigga's talking about. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, hold on. In the name of my ancestors. <laughs> oh, Lord. What the Get rid of that. 
there real quick, as usual. Come on now, where you at? There we go. In the name of Amphethus. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth. Okay, let me uh, okay, let me just try to I find am, something that ain't just nigga about. It's like is a term you use for corn and okra. You nurture children. You don't raise children because children need children need to be nurtured. They need to learn life. You don't have to teach life lessons to corn or okra or pigs or cows. The fuck is this nigga talking about, man? So, you see, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> No matter where you go, it's, you're going to land on just some incoherent bullshit. And you got a bunch of old niggas like that on YouTube just babbling. With When you come from a spaceship, understand me, and then you get okra, you can't raise okra like you would raise a child. You see, you got to raise a child like you would raise corn. You got to plant them and then they grow. But you have to nurture the corn Understand me? Because you can't fry a child like you would fry okra. Because then you won't have nothing but a fruit salad. Understand me? Now, this might be a little too heavy for some of y'all, so let me make it plain. Once you get a lima bean, put that lima bean in a sweet potato pie. You put that sweet potato pie on a wrap and let it float for three days. Understand me? And when once it floats, it will turn into a, a vibranium. You use that vibranium to raise your children the correct way, brother. Now, I don't know how else to explain it to you. What the fuck is this nigga talking about, man? Damn. And you got old niggas like that out here. That's why young cats don't, don't be getting no game. You got these old babbling-ass niggas out here just running their motherfucking mouth, ain't talking about shit. You uh, uh, So a young kid is like, well, damn, I'm, I'm trying to look at this elder. Damn, I'm trying to learn how to navigate out here in the world, man. Let me talk to this elder. He might know something. Hey, elder, man, I'm trying to get it together. I'm, I'm, I'm 18, man. I'm trying to avoid the pitfalls of life, brother. What do I do? Now, first of all, brother, what you have to do, you have to get some raw black-eyed peas, okay? If you really want to navigate, get those black-eyed peas. You have to wrap that in a tortilla shell, brother. Once you get that tortilla shell, you understand that is the metaphor for life. Brother, you cannot get a tortilla shell with lima beans and black-eyed peas and rice in it and then think you're going to put that in an oven and it's going to be a piece of fucking cake, brother. It don't work like that. You're going to have to get that, wrap it up. You're going to have to put it on a spaceship, brother. Let that thing go out there into outer space. Let it orbit around the sun, which is 25,000 miles from the Earth. Let it land in Antarctica. You float a vessel up there and get it and it's going to be magnetized to make you fight off the cracker with magnetic magnetic energy, brother. And your know, kid is walking away from that like, okay, let me go sell some fucking dope then because I ain't getting no answers from these niggas. You make a motherfucker want to go sell dope with that stupid nigga babble. <laughs> oh, my God. Lord, 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 my, my. My young brothers, this is why I, I, I do the most that I can for my young cats out here. Because I know some of these old dusty niggas out here ain't shit. They ain't giving you no game. You, you can't learn nothing from them. So I, my young cats, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you, brothers. I feel you. I know some of these old niggas. They ain't lacing you with nothing, nothing, and what little knowledge they have, they use that knowledge to go buck dance and coon for white mommy, white daddy. So my young folks, they they not giving y'all the game you need. That's what I'm here for. That's why I'm just telling you how it works and how the game operates off the hip. That's why I do these movies, to really lace you with the game so you can see it. You understand? That's why I lace you with the game. Yeah, that dude, 
and I'm getting at his ass because he be bootlegging my movies. That nigga be trying to post my movies up. Man. How would you give, how would you advise black men in the military who are trying to be the spooks who say about to do it? Good, good thing. Um, get all the game you can. Get all the military intel you can. Get all of it. Get all of it and then let us know. Let, let people who are empowered, who are really doing empowering things, let us know what's going on. Let us know what's happening. Keep us abreast on what's going on. Man. We do have to take responsibility for our actions. Yeah, man, we, we just got old niggas and, and bed wenches. All these Negroes are just, just trying to go for theirs, man. You know, that's why there's such a rift between the young and the old. And again, black folks got to get off this thing where we're just going to abandon the young black folks. We just can't leave them out there like that. You dig? Coming back from Pittsburgh, hanging in. I'm going to be in Cincinnati pretty soon. I'm going to be in Cincinnati pretty soon. Man. But let me see. Well, let me see where we are as far as the Hidden Colors 5 crowdfunding. Let's see where we are. All right, we're still at 61,497. By this week, let's we should be at least at 100k. At least at 100k. So we can do this thing correctly. This is very much needed, family. This is very much needed HC5. I hope you all shared it on your page. Um, the Breakfast Club interview that we did, that I did on the Breakfast Club, that's going to be out hopefully this, this week, possibly tomorrow. It will be out hopefully this week. I can't wait to see it. Uh, we had a very good conversation. Shout out to DJ Envy and Mr. Charlemagne the God. I wish my sister Angela Yee was in the building, but she was out when I was on air. You dig? And I had a good time in New York. And speaking of New York, I put up a picture. The picture was taken down. The picture was actually taken down. I posted a picture of um, my dude Brad was in New York. And he posted a picture where he was in Times Square. And that's where I was staying. There's a bunch of naked dudes. It was some kind of sit-in or something. There's a bunch of fucking naked dudes. I'm like, what the hell? So I got it from my dude Brad's page and I reposted it and they flagged it and took it down. And I was like, well, damn. No wonder I was feeling funny style about that area of New York a couple of days ago. When I was in New York a few days ago, I said I was, I was over in Hell's Kitchen area and that's not too, too far from Times Square. But I was over in Hell's Kitchen. I was on one of these little side streets and I'm like, well, shit. The, the energy I'm getting is real funny style over here. These dudes are kind of looking at me with a look of ecstasy in their eye. I'm like, hey, is this area cool? Do, I don't want to be out here at night and people think that I'm into some kind of activity. You dig? I can't even post the picture here, but they, they took it off of my Instagram with some some dudes just standing around with their dangalings out in broad daylight in Times Square. It looked like they were protesting something. I don't know what they could be protesting with they dick and balls out. You dig? You say that NYC black restaurant owner, he might be on that side of the game, but that's all right. Go see the brother's place. He might be, but still patronize that brother's business. I don't care what the brother's lifestyle is. That's still our brother, and the food was good. You went to Spoon fed for lunch today. That's what's up, Shane. The food was on fleek. The food was real good. And it's a brother who owned it. So shout out to my brother. That's my brother. 
So I want all y'all to go to the restaurant. Some people were talking about what the guy's sexuality may or may not be. That I don't care. That's our brother. Now, when I'm out there in the streets, I want to know what neighborhood I'm in. If a white dude walk up to me and he got on some Daisy Dukes, I want to know what time is my Uber going to show up to get me the fuck up. But we're out of here, away from his ass. Well, they try to do something to a nigga. And they, I want them thinking I'm out there for some kind of nefarious reasons. You dig? Man. Yes, everybody hit up that HC5. We're going we're gonna to get there popping. We're going to get it popping with, with HC5. We're going to get there with HC5. We need the family to get involved, family. We need y'all to get involved. This is why it's important for us to handle business on an individual level and be on code. You don't wait on the other person. you got to be on code. Being on code is doing things as an individual, saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do to empower this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to do to make sure I'm doing my part of empowerment. So Neely Fuller talks about that code all the time. He talks about what a code is. A code is all about doing something that works and not doing stuff that don't work. And family, I want y'all to really grasp that concept. Everything you do, you say, am I going to empower black folks or am I going to disempower black folks? Am I going to empower black people or am I going to strengthen white supremacy? You always ask yourself that. See, the white supremacists, they're very good at thinking like that. They think, okay, if I make this move around black people, am I going to empower them or am I going to strengthen white supremacy? That's why when they get around you, they start talking in this coded language they start talking in this language. Well, we're going to do something for minorities. And black folks are, yay. And the white supremacists are looking at each other like, got their ass. Because now you think, oh, look, we're going to get something now. Lord, they, we're going to get us some reparations now. And they didn't commit to doing anything for you. They didn't commit to doing anything for you. I saw that one politician, I talked about him, he was running against Ted Cruz. He was at a black barber shop. He's getting his hair cut by a black dude. And somebody was like, oh man, look at him. He's getting the barber. He's getting his hair cut by a brother. Man, take this vote. You better go and take this vote right now. So niggas already cooning. All they got to do is do symbolic gestures. They go to a barber shop. See, it used to be when they go to a black church. But they understand they got to get some of the young voters now. And the black church ain't going to cut it. Showing up to a black church don't mean shit. That game is played out. Because we know, the young people know, church is full of coons. Beto, yeah, Beto, that's his name. But we know that the church is a full of coons right now. So you're not impressing anybody by showing up to a church. So now they're going to start going to barbershops. This is what y'all about to see. They're about to start going to a lot of black barbershops. They're going to start going to little soul food restaurants. Any popular soul food restaurant, they're going to go to it. They're going to start hanging out with athletes. I'm going to tell you what, these, what they're about to do to try to galvanize the black vote. What you're also going to see, you're going to see a lot of more boule people attack folks like me. That's one thing, because I tried to teach black folks, don't you go with them unless they give you a specific agenda that's going to specifically benefit black people. Not this lift every boat, kumbaya, prison reform bullshit. Well, prison reform help everybody. That, that affects black people. Nah. We got to get some specific things besides prison reform. We need to get some things such as police punishment if you want to affect black folks because we're disproportionately being murdered by race soldiers. So we're going to have to have some mandatory punishment. 
we're going to have to have some mandatory resources allocated towards us so we can build businesses. You understand? Mandatory land allocated so that we can have land, so we can build things on land. Since land property has been denied us based on race, we got to have very specific things for black society, not that kumbaya shit. So when people like me talk this for all black people, they send that boule crowd after me. Because, see, the thing about that boule crowd, they do all this buck dancing for the Hillary's and all of these other politicians because they're going to get individual jobs out of it. They're going to get individual jobs out of it. That's why that whole boule crowd don't like me because attacking me is part of their job. That's their way to impress white mommy, white daddy. We're going to you know, get rid of these subversive Negroes for you so that you don't have to be deemed as a racist by going after them. We'll go after them for you. You understand? And you'll pay me back by giving me a job over at BET. You give me a job at The Root or Huffington Post or one of these other white publications. Because the, all it's about, they'll raise a little hell about racism until they get a job. Once they get a job, you know, the white daddy tells them to kind of bring it, reel it back, tone it down a little bit. They never go too far. They never go too far with the pointing out racism talk. And, and they got black people thinking that they're down and they got white mommy and white daddy saying, hey, these Negroes are all right. They're not going to go too far where they're going to threaten our power. You understand? So we got to understand how these folks operate. We got to understand their, their maneuvers and the way they they handle their business. Yeah, Mark Lamont Hill. Mark, I'm real funny style about Mark Lamont Hill. <clears throat> I'm real funny style about him. He He's done a, some real suspect shit. He tries to play both sides of the fence. And I know you're watching, Mark. Mark hit me up. He sent me a DM one day wanting to talk on the phone because I called out some of his fuckery. And Mark, I don't really want to talk to you, brother. Mark, I have nothing to say to you. We ain't got nothing in common. We don't really have anything to talk about, brother. The crowd you associate yourself with, that speaks volumes. You understand? You got to watch the crowd some of these folks hang with. You understand? Yeah, understand. Just because some of these people are ranting and raving on TV, yelling loud and all that, no, nah, don't. Nah. They might yell and they might go after Trump and be loud and emotional and all this old stuff. But nah, you let white daddy come in there dangling a good job in their face. You know, they, they'll calm it down. They'll calm that down. But like I said, you look at people who are known for online fuckery like the Jamila Lemuse, anybody who's associated with her, black society should be on alert. Lovey, anybody associated with her, black people should just really avoid them. Yeah, anybody associated with her, her fuckery is well known. You dig? So you you gotta watch that. Candace Owens, we we know what you. Candace Owens is out for herself, but but I will give her credit. You know, she's running game on her. But you know, how long is she's gonna is she gonna run that game? She's kind of running the Amarosa game. Now she knows that they're a bunch of white supremacists, but you know I want to see if she's just trying to play this out long enough so she can get a check. And Jesse Lee Peterson, poor Jesse. Jesse Lee Peterson was on his show the other day, and somebody called up and called him a nigga on his own show. 
Jesse Lee did all that cooning and somebody called him a nigga. Amanda Seal, she's another funny style one. She don't like me and I don't like her. I don't like her because she don't like me. Amanda Seals is another one. Who's funny style? You did? Yeah, Jesse got his wake up call. Yeah, that, that embarrassed Jesse. He was embarrassed by that. Jesse was embarrassed by that. Yeah, those dudes, the Hodge twins, those are opportunists. Man, well, we all know Larry Elder. Those are the obvious ones. But we got to watch the covert ones. See, that's the thing. We already know about the Larry Elders and the Jessies. These are hardcore coons. But we got to watch the ones that will actually talk black. They'll talk pro-black and... They'll go after a couple of white supremacists, but let them get in the room with white mommy and white zaddy. They'll be up there bug dancing too. Man. But yeah, that hurt Jesse's soul. Would I debate Larry Elder? No. The people, they try to get me to debate coons all the time. No. Have I ever dated a coon chick? Um, no. I'm trying to, nah, no. Because I've already, I've always had a, a very strong militaristic mentality so I would I would repel a coon chick anyway so now nah, I've never dated a coon chick and plus coon chicks are pretty much bed witches so they wouldn't even date me anyway you dig no use for debating yeah yeah coon coon females are usually bed witches so Amanda Seals work with the roof. Yeah, that uh, there you go. That says everything you need to know about her. Man. Yeah, the that toxic masculinity talk, that's those boule roots niggas. You know, it's trying to spread that gay agenda. And that's another thing. A lot of those boule cats, you know, undercover queens. You understand? Look at, y'all study some of these old school black preachers. A lot of these old school black preachers, especially these old school mega black preachers, many of them were clicked in with the boule and many of them have reputations for being down low queens. It was a mega preacher back during the Jim Crow era named Daddy Grace. Big time money. This dude had major money. And Daddy Grace had a white wife. I mean, this was a black man with a white wife during the Jim Crow era. Little bitty old short nigga. But he had mixed race churches all over the country. He was just going around the country just getting millions and you know, some people said he might have been clicked in with the boule, but this dude, there was talk about him being an undercover queen. Another dude named Father Divine. Was it? I always get Father Divine and Daddy Grace mixed up. So, no, no. It was Father Divine. That was the one who was married to the white woman. He was an undercover queen. Daddy Grace, I think he was an overt queen. Uh, Daddy Grace, he was another one. Daddy Grace was another dude who they said he had a lover and all this old shit. Big mega preacher all over the place. Um, um, James Cleveland. You understand? They were saying that he was a queen. He was an old mega preacher. They said Reverend Ike was moist. Father Divine out of Detroit. Yep. Dad, look up these names. 
These are these old school preachers from way back in the day that were making big paper. Um, they, they said Reverend Ike was some shit going on with him. Big, yeah, Jim Jones did get his game from Father Divine. Yep, Jim Jones actually tried to steal his congregation after Father Divine died. But, um, you know, uh, James Cleveland, they were saying some shit about him for a long time. There's always been rumors about James Cleveland among the black church circles. Reverend Ike, he was a huge, big money reverend back in the 70s. Yeah, they said James Cleveland died with of AIDS. So a lot of these dudes were clicked in with the boule, especially the old big money preachers. Well, Dr. King was boule. Dr. King was boule. You know? And we know about Eddie, Eddie Long. We know about Eddie Long. So, you know, there's a lot of strange activity coming from some of them dudes. You dig? And not not all. I ain't shitting on all of the boule. I ain't shitting on all of you. But we do know there's some funny style stuff coming out that boule movement. And Lawrence Grant, uh, Lawrence, yeah, Lawrence Graham, he's real moist. Yes, he is. Lawrence Graham, he's supposed to have a family or whatever. Lawrence Graham, he's switching around. Lawrence Graham is real moist, and he wrote the book about the boule. He's in it. His vibe is real moist. You dig? So, yeah, funny, funny shit going on with those boule cats. No, uh, it's just some funny style shit going on. <laughs> You know, these, there's some funny shit going on with these dudes. You know, God, then you got Roland Martin running around here with an S curl and an ascot, dancing and shit. So I hope they ain't got this nigga in the buck. I ain't saying they are, but damn. Beep, 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 smack it. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> I'm just talking, but I'm, I'm saying, though. You dig? Yeah, that's why so many kids be get, going up in these churches getting touched. That's why these kids go up in these churches. The, these churches are uh, an infiltration ground and a recruitment ground for that whole boule thing. You dig? Bobby Jones is yeah. hilarious. But they get put in key positions. Look, when we're out promoting the Mink Slide album, I noticed something. A lot of black program directors, a lot of black people who work at the networks in charge of approving videos and stuff, a lot of them, you know, or part of the LGBT community. It's very interesting how they're strategically placed into these positions. And a lot of these people come from these Boule, Jack and Jill links connections. And they are put in positions as the gatekeeper. That's why a lot of folks are scared to call them out. Because white daddies put them in very particular positions as gatekeepers because that's what they are. They're gatekeepers to a certain degree. You dig? So it's real heavy stuff. And anyway, let me get out of here. Let me go see what's going on with Mama Peanut and my babies, see if they sleep. Um, family, let's hit that Hidden Colors 5 right below you. Let's everybody get involved. Hidden Colors 5. Let's see where we are right now. Let's see if we've moved up a few notches while we are live on air. We're still pretty much 61K, 498. So let's get it popping. Keep contributing this week so we can get the, the numbers up, the funding for HC5, so we can make this film the way that it should be made and get it out the way it should be received around the world. 
And I thank everybody for contributing and continue to contribute to the HC5 crowdfunding. And I'll holler at you guys Tuesday. We'll be back on ISM Radio this Tuesday. Y'all be good.